Docker containers are now pretty much everywhere in software development. Whether you're deploying an application to the world or running code checks automatically in a CI pipeline, you will likely come across Docker containers. In this video, we look at some of the best practices when writing Docker images, like optimizing the image size so only necessary dependencies are present, choosing a good parent image, properly layering your Docker images to maximize cache hit, and how you can secure your applications by avoiding known vulnerabilities. So let's start with the following. So what are Docker containers? Containers provide you a way to virtualize resources needed to run an application, just like virtual machines. Containers share the underlying host's kernel and don't really require that much initialization. Didn't get that? Well, think of containers as essentially a clean environment containing only necessary tools needed to run an application and nothing else. And Docker is simply a container provider, a system running in your machine that allows containerized environments to run. The main point is that Docker containers provide you a way to build and run applications in an isolated environment where all dependencies needed are just there. So you can essentially just ship the environment with the application to make sure that it's going to run no matter what. None of that, well, it works on my machine. The most important step of working with Docker is to build an image. Images are blueprints for the environment you create when you run a Docker container. Docker images are created with the help of a Docker file, a file that specifies the OS being used, files to copy inside a container, and all the dependencies needed for your app. For this reason, your Docker files are perhaps the most important part of working with Docker, as they tell Docker how an image is created. We'll be mostly looking at this file and how you can improve the performance, size and security of your containers by applying some very, very easy tricks to the Docker file. I assume that you already know how to write a Docker file, but if you don't yet know the syntax, nor have you written a Docker file before, I recommend checking out the reference documentation page and most importantly, actually writing some of your own containers to run an application you've developed because this is the sort of thing that you learn the most by just trying. With that in mind, here's the first thing I do to make sure I write good Docker containers. Choosing the right parent image in the Docker file. Parent images serve as the foundation for your Docker images and provide the initial OS and file system contained in your image. Choosing a parent image is usually the first step when creating a custom Docker image. This is where you choose the initial environment to build your image upon. In the Docker file, the parent is specified using the from command followed by the image you want to use as the foundation. The term base image, according to the Docker documentation, refers to an image that has from scratch or the most minimal container Docker allows as its parent. This is usually the case with base OS images provided by many different organizations. For example, Ubuntu provides the focal image as a base image, where it probably doesn't have any parent image but builds the OS itself on top of the scratch layer, as well as the initial file system. There are quite a few different features worth looking at when choosing a parent image. For me, however, the most important consideration is fit for use. What do I mean by this? Well, I really mean making sure that the parent image sets up a container for what it's been used for. For example, I mostly use homemade Docker images for CI pipelines. Perhaps I want to create a new C++ image to run my C++ checks, build, and create releases for a target user. For this hypothetical purpose, my Docker image needs to have the correct system libraries matching my target users, and to be able to run the build and tests in an environment similar to my users. In this case, I tend to choose parent images with the same OS as my users, and also the most popular OS version, perhaps matching that of my users. However, if your Docker image is intended to run a web application, perhaps written in Golang, in a random AWS instance, then I would consider different things, such as, can I find a parent image that already has my specific version of Golang? Are there any vulnerabilities in the images? Initialization times. For most of these cases, please make sure that you choose a good enough parent image by asking yourself if the parent image is actually suitable for your purposes. Now let's talk a little bit about security. It's important to think about the security needs of your images from the start. Fair enough, if you are creating an image solely for CI purposes, where you only need to run a few local build steps in a fairly isolated CI environment in a pipeline like GitHub Actions or GitLab, you probably don't think you would need that much security. But think again, some known vulnerabilities are scary, making your software prone to hackers. Common vulnerabilities and exposures, or as more commonly referred to as CVEs, are tracking issues of known security exposures in common software. There are many different websites you can use to track and discover CVEs in modern software, but the one we're going to be looking at today is Docker Scout, a Docker solution that scans Docker images and finds known vulnerabilities in them. They also provide detailed information on the dependencies in your images found to contain the vulnerabilities, as well as where they are found in your images, version information, and remediation steps. What I recommend is to use Docker Scout in your built containers and making sure you avoid dependencies containing these high-risk CVEs. If you're pushing your images to the Docker Hub, you can also enable the Docker Scout vulnerability scanning feature on your public images. This is a must for images used to deploy applications. Sometimes, even your parent images can contain vulnerabilities, in which case you should probably find a better alternative that contains no high-risk vulnerabilities. 
In this example, you can see that Docker Scout found quite a few high risk CVEs on this old Docker image of mine. Furthermore, it also tells me which version of this dependency has a fix. So I can either upgrade this dependency or get rid of it altogether. If you are using Docker images to deploy applications to the world, I recommend using secure based images for your app. The sponsor for today's video does just that. Chingard provides secure and hardened Docker images containing zero, that's right, zero known vulnerabilities. By signing up to Chingard, you have access to secure Docker images that you can use to build perfect containers for your applications. For example, I have been using the Golang applications to deploy a CMS application that I have been developing with a few friends of the channel. The Chingard image has no known vulnerability, which makes me a little less paranoid that my application will be exploited when deployed. Using Chainguard images is very simple. I went from this Docker file to this Docker file. All it takes is to choose the suitable parent image, in my case the Wolfie base, and installing the dependencies you need through APK, a package manager you may know from distros like Opine. The Wolfie base image is a very lightweight parent image built by Chainguard, and as expected, the base image itself doesn't contain any CVEs. Once I build my Golang image, all I had to do is make very minimal changes to my Docker Compose file and run as usual. Everything worked as expected and I actually ended up with an image that's smaller than the previous Golang images I had in the past. Check out Chainguard and make sure you use their CVE free images today. And you can be sure that when you're deploying your apps to, let's say Amazon's EC2 instances, your application will be safer. Let's talk about layers in Docker files. Onions have layers, ogres have layers, and Docker images also have layers. You can actually think of Docker images as a sequence of layers that extend the previous one. In fact, your parent image is also a layer. In each layer, Docker essentially stores the changes to the file system, the dependencies you installed, and some metadata for that layer. This is why it's important to keep the layers as self-contained as possible, and why you should remove the files you no longer need in the same layer, as this will make sure Docker doesn't keep the file metadata and its contents. In addition, layers are very important to Docker images, as Docker caches intermediate build layers from your images. This means that when you're rebuilding an image where a layer has changed, Docker will only rebuild the changed layers as well as the ones after that. Docker can also use cache layers from different images, meaning that you can share intermediate layers between images, and if they are the same, build times will also be faster due to the cached layers. The important takeaway here is that you should probably keep your layers fairly self-contained and avoid cramming a lot of constantly changing build steps into the first few layers. And also make sure that you keep the most commonly changing layers at the end of your Docker files to improve build times. As an example, the system dependencies installation is one of the first layers in this Docker file as they probably won't change that much in the long run, whereas the dependencies that constantly change, such as the compiler installations and other commonly updated tools, are left to later layers in this image. This will make sure you save as much time as possible in the build process of your image. Up until now, we looked at general Docker file advice that can be applied to any image you're creating. Of course, there are many more improvements you can make once you know what kind of image you will need, which OS your base is, and what kind of application you're deploying. For example, if you really care about image size, you can find several Stack Overflow posts on what you can safely delete from, let's say, an Ubuntu-based Docker image. In addition, there may be special options you can use on package managers like pip to avoid installing the suggested dependencies or keeping caches of builds around. These things tend to save a lot of disk space. If you want to have images that are really fast to pull, you may want to really reduce the image size. One common practice for getting truly small image sizes is to start with a minimal parent image, such as an alpine based image. Of course, this will probably affect the way you build your application, so it can be executed from essentially a different Linux distribution. I've personally been working with Docker images for over five years, and there are two things that never changes, having to constantly read the Docker documentation and looking at how other people create their Docker images. I highly recommend going out there, finding random projects online, and learning how they are using Docker to create their own images, and how people deploy apps with it. This is truly the only way to get good at something. Let me know in the comments if you have any good tips for creating Docker images, and how you are using Docker to deploy cool things. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.